Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm James and today I'm going to do something slightly different. I am going to start, if possible, when I have time and when I remember to do a focused video on a specific plant in my collection um, every week. We're just going to go into some of the information, the depth, the background of all of these plants because I find myself doing all of this research on the plants. I like try to find out as much as possible about each specific plant that I get in my collection, particularly if it's something a little bit interesting or unusual. And then it kind of just sits there and I don't do anything with it. I thought I'd put it together into a nice little bite-sized chunk for people to come and watch if they wanted to. So that's what we're going to do today. We're starting with a slightly unusual plant this week. It's a Hoya. Um, it's a member of the family Aposinaceae, which is a word that I've struggled with before. Aposinaceae. Genus is Hoya. Um, and it is called the Hoya imbricata. By coming quite close, you can see those splashes all over the leaves there. This is obviously quite a large plant. Um, I got it shipped directly from Thailand, I believe, and uh, it arrived quickly and in really good condition. Um, and it's done a fair bit of growing since it got here. I was worried that it would kind of just freeze from the, the research I've done. They kind of, it seems like they don't enjoy growing in a less than ideal climate, but I have it in my grow tent in my little greenhouse with really high humidity and relatively okay light. And uh, the tips, you can see the green growing tips there. Those are all new. It did not arrive with those. Everything was very brown when it arrived. And there are two or three of those throughout the plant. Um, I had to cut off a fair bit of stem. Oh, there's another one there. Um, a fair bit of stem uh, in places where the leaves had kind of just fallen off or the stems were sort of rotting. Um, but apart from that, it's doing pretty okay. So this is the plant, this is a Hoya imbricata. I'm just gonna run through some little details about it. I will hold it up here. Um, it's basically an epiphytic creeper, which means that it grows up into trees. Um, really amazing plant, actually. Looking at it like this, they kind of just look like little sort of tacos, compressed, crushed little leaves. But if uh, the plant gets a suitable surface, so like a tree trunk or a wall or something like that to climb up, the leaves kind of flatten out into discs. And although this species, I think, this particular variety, um, the leaves won't get huge, there is a type of, the, of imbricata, I don't know specifically what name it is, um, where the leaves can get up to like 25 centimeters in diameter, which is like ridiculous, that's huge, that's like dinner plate sized um, leaves. And uh, imbricata, the name, comes from the sort of overlapping nature of these leaves. So growing up the trunk, the leaves will go grow into like a plate and then they'll overlap the next one, overlap the next one, overlap the next one, going all the way up into the tree. And the nice cool thing about this is that ants then use those as kind of like a super highway up into the trees. And um, they'll form colonies and nests underneath each of the leaves. So if I bring this a little bit closer, um, let's see where, which is an easy one to open up. They're quite like tightly furled. If I, oh, no, I'm gonna break that leaf. Let's not do that. Ah, this one's partially unfurled. So opening it up like this, you can kind of see inside there that the stem attaches to the leaf um, like that. And then all around it, not so much in this one, but normally there's like a little mass of roots that grow. In most of the other ones, if I open it up, there are a few little roots that stick out. And what those roots are there for is to harvest the waste products and I suppose the waste products of the ants that live underneath the leaves. So not only are the ants getting something cool out of this um, because they're not exposed to predators as they climb up and down into the trees, but the plant gets something great out of it as well because it can absorb a little bit of the nutrients from those ants. Growth wise, I have not had any issues with it yet, but I've only had it in my collection for about a month at this point, so it hasn't had time for there hasn't been time for very much to go wrong. Although I would say with the plants that are really fussy, you know immediately that they're gonna be difficult. This one has not given me too many problems. Um, it needs bright light, mm, ideally not direct. I'm sure it could handle a little bit of direct light um, and high humidity and quite high temperatures. Uh, some of the Hoya are even fussier than uh, aroids, surprisingly, because, um, well, not surprisingly, maybe aroids are pretty hardy, but, um, they kind of love temperatures above 16 degrees Celsius and uh, love temperatures sort of above the 60% humidity. Apparently, as it drops below, they kind of stop growing and just kind of uh, hibernate until um, better conditions arrive. 
Uh, overall, not too difficult. Potting medium wise, this one was sent in just a chunk of coconut fiber, which is pretty cool. I've seen that in other places um, for epiphytes, but normally in sort of this climate in the UK, I'm assuming in parts of the US um, and higher up in the Northern Hemisphere, um, the humidity, the temperature is just not enough to make that a valid potting medium generally, because if I had this outside of my grow tent, that would dry up in a heartbeat and the plant would die. Um, so I think probably if you were trying to grow this outside of a grow tent, it would be important to have something that held a little bit more moisture. And I always like take my brain to where the plant would grow in the wild. Whatever you can kind of imagine coagulating in the nooks and crannies of a tree, stick that in and see how it does. Obviously, it would not be a Hoya video if we didn't talk about flowers, although I have not really experienced any Hoya flowers yet. So I'm just kind of talking about these um, in theory. They are pretty amazing. Looking at a picture here, they've kind of got a red corona, which is like the central part of the flower. And then the outside is sort of a peachy yellow, almost orange. And then they're furry beyond that. I'm gonna pop a picture up here. Probably the same one that I'm looking at now. Really impressive, really interesting. Um, and apparently they smell amazing. So I'm really looking forward. I'm hoping that this guy will flower at some point, just so I can experience some form of Hoya bloom. Um, right, I'm going to put it down and I'm going to show you my little propagation bag. So this plant arrived pretty massive and uh, there were a lot of stems that I cut off and just stuck straight into a Ziploc to try and propagate. This is one of those Ziplocs. I tried not to crowd them too much because I had them all in one and uh, some of them started to rot so I separated them out just to give them a bit more space um, and I've been giving them a bit of airflow opening the bag every couple of days. And they're doing really well. You can see again, if I bring it close, can you see? I don't know. But you can see those green growing tips and all along the stems, um, very a la Hoya, there are uh, aerial roots growing out. So they're doing pretty well in there, I think. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to propagate them on from here. Probably like coil them up in some medium and just hope that they find a way to grow from there. But I think if you have the right uh, conditions, if you have the right warmth, the right humidity, the right light. It's not an overly difficult plant to um, look after. Yeah, so that is kind of a little plants in focus thing. Uh, hopefully this isn't too long a video and I will try and do these every week or every couple of weeks if I get interesting plants um, and if I find enough information to share because I don't just want to show you a plant and be like, this is a cool plant because that's basically all my other videos. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you do want to see more things like this, please subscribe to this channel. If you want to see updates on all my plants, see the new ones that are coming in, uh, that, that, go and follow my Instagram account. That's the thing. It's called at slow plants. I'll pop it right here. Um, yeah, I post pretty regularly uh, and hopefully I will see you soon. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Bye.